Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sinky with day 5 of my 300 subscriber week. And today I have a tutorial and a program probably none of you have used before. It's Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, this is the program that I use for syncing and rendering. And I honestly would highly suggest it to any editor who's starting out or any player who wants to start editing their minis or their episodes. It's an extremely basic program once you know its tools easily. So it's extremely basic and it's really easy to use and it's very effective and it's much it's much easier to sync perfectly than it is in After Effects. So what I've done here is now started a new project and I'm just going to name it Tutorial. All these settings are okay, you just want to make sure that your scratch disks are somewhere where you have a lot of space. So I have about, yeah, 85 gigabytes should be enough. Okay. By the way, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro CC in this. Most of the things that I'm going to be doing are, all, well, all of the things I'm doing are able to be transported from the other versions of this. Um, like I said before, I'd highly suggest getting this. If you get this in combination with After Effects, it's really good. Since they're both Adobe programs, it's really easy to copy clips from Premiere, put them into After Effects, do your extra editing with effects there, and then bring your composition back into Premiere Pro. And Adobe Link allows you to easily render straight from there, and it saves you a lot of time, which you would... Um, usually have to spend in Sony Vegas rendering out your footage um, then put it into After Effects before rendering that out and it's also really good for compressing your file size Pre Premiere you don't need to use Handbrake it has a very many um, exporting options so I definitely highly 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 recommend it. So the first thing I want to do is make a new sequence which you can do by clicking on this button and then sequence or just control N. So you want your settings to be DVC Pro HD 720p, 720p 60, or AVC HD 720p 60. The it doesn't make that much of a difference at all. It's just one of those two is the one you want since you are able to edit in 720p, which all like all clips are rendered in, and 60 frames per second. So I'm just going to name the sequence itself, tutorial. What you name it doesn't really make any difference. It just, that will be the default name when you go to render it, but you can change it when you do go to render it. So I'm just going to click on OK. And then um, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using the song and some clips from a montage that I'm editing for CLXIS. So what I've done here is I've found my song and I've dragged it straight into my um, media browser here, which is where you drag in all your files. It's the same as you see in almost all other editing programs. Over here you have your source window, or your source viewer, where you are able to see whatever you are editing. You have your tools here, and your effects and a further media browser here. You also have your effect controls up there if you need them. And your timeline here. Now this is the most important part where all your editing happens. Is where you drag all your video and you edit it. Okay. So once I've got my song dragged in, I usually put it on Audio 3. I do this because this allows me to put my gun sounds on Audio 2. Whereas when I when whenever you copy any audio, it automatically copies it copies it to audio one. So this way you can copy on gun sounds without overlaying your um, previous gun sounds, and also without overlaying your song. So audio three is the best layer for the song. If you're using After Effects CC, just mouse over this button thing and scroll up. And that will allow you to then see the waveform. It's not used that often. It's mostly uh, I mostly use my ear to know when the beat is, but it can be quite helpful. 
and you'd like to you'd want to do the same with audio too for a reason I'll explain later. So now that we have our song, we're just gonna need a clip, so we're just gonna find I'm just going to use the ACOG six man. So what I'm going to do is find my first beat by playing through the song, listening for it, and then cutting the audio where that is. Alright, so we know that our beat actually cuts in here, as you can hear. But I don't want my beat to be on that part since in editing this, I will have all my shots on the kick in terms of, um, there's the bass and the kick, the low and the high tones in the song, which alternate between themselves in terms of beat. And I want my shots to be on the kick, which is not the first beat. The first beat is one of the basses. So I want to make, what I actually want to do is have my shot on the second beat, allowing me to bring the clip in on the first moment, in the first beat, and that just helps me that I don't have to have that weird change of flow later on where I switch from sinking to the bass to sinking to the um, kick. So I'm just gonna find that. Alright, so could you hear that just a little bit, just a little boom? That's what I'm trying to sink to. So what I'm doing now is using one of Premiere's amazing features. You can go frame by frame with your arrow keys left and right. And you can hear every single, um, for every single frame the audio. And when that beat comes in, there's a very distinct crackle that you can hear. Um, you'll hear it in the next frame. Can you hear that difference? That's the beat coming in. And that's when you want to cut your clip. So what you want to do is use your razor tool or uh, razor tool or press C, mouse it over your um, timeline, uh, over your playhead, and if you have snap enabled over here, it's going to snap straight to it. You can just click, and it's going to split it into or two audio layers. If you find that snap doesn't work anymore, you just have to toggle it on and off here with the S button or just by clicking. So now that we have our first beat, I mean our first shot, we also want our first beat. That one's a lot more, a lot more clear there, so we're just going to cut it there as well. Now that I have that, I'm going to drag in my clip. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the game audio, since we don't want that and it sounds horrible. So I'm just going to unlink, which unlinks the audio from the video, and then I can just delete the audio. Now I'm just going to play through this and find the first shot on the video. Okay, so now I've gone frame by frame to find the exact point when he shoots, which in this case is shown by a muzzle flash. I'm going to cut the video, highlight the entire layer, highlight the two cut layers, and then just drag the clip over until it snaps to that audio layer that I cut before. That's the same snap function. You cut where the shot is, you cut where the shot should be, snap it together, and it should be perfectly synced. Now, as I said before, I want the clip to come in on the first beat, so I'm just going to use the other razor like tool in Premiere, which is this, and just drag the start of it until it snaps to that first cut that I made. So now it should come in on the main on the first beat and it should shoot on the second. Let's see. And as you see there, it was perfect. So now what we want to do is find our second beat. So I'm just gonna listen for that second kick. So it's right there. Of course, there's a trial and error, and if you ever want to readjust and do something, you can use the same tool that I just used for changing when the clip starts, 
and just drag it back and forth in a sort of a balancing act. So now that we know where our second shot should be, we need to find it in the video. So let's just go play through and cut it where it is. <laughs> There we go. Drag, in this case I wouldn't drag both of them over since we know that this one's already perfectly synced. I'll just drag the second shot over. And as you can see, I now have a, an actual gap of you know about 10 frames where nothing's going on. Now what you want to do to avoid this is um, press R or um, in, after, in Premiere Pro CS5 and CS6 it's X I believe. Or just click on the straight stretch tool, find the edge of the first audio, uh, the first video, and drag it out until it snaps. What this does is affect the uh, percentage at which this video clip play plays, so it fits perfectly your gap. It's a very imp and very powerful tool, and it's a lot easier than doing it in After Effects, I believe. So now I'm going to find our first, our third shot. Alright, so there we have a third shot, but we can see that our person hasn't taken our shot yet, which isn't good. We're just going to first cut where the shot is. So as you can see here, uh, this actually goes too long to fit with a song. Now, you can use the rate stretch tool and make it faster, but I highly suggest not doing this because if we play this through now, you'll see that it looks really weird. And you want to avoid speeding up things as much as possible. Usually you can speed it up to about 110% without it looking too bad, but you know, you try to avoid it. So there's two different techniques that you could use to avoid this. First of all, I'm just going to do this one, which is finding my bass, and I'm going to cut on the audio layer. Cut. Then you cut your video, highlight your two videos here, and then drag them over until your gun shot snaps with the where it should be. Then you just adjust the start of this one. So what this does is that on the beat between the two shots, it's going to switch between that point and that point. So it's still perfectly synced. So we can just watch that and see. Now, as you can see, that looked really awkward. That is because for this style of music, rock, it tends not to look good. So another way of doing it is simply by just cutting straight to the shot on the beat. And so I'm just going to drag that over there. So now we can play it through and see how that looks. As you see, that looked a little bit better. Of course, if it looks too rough, I'd suggest then um, adding Twixter to the shot before it goes. It um, adds a more sort of a time continuity where people, since they think that time has been slowed down, they accept the fact that time has been actually skipped here. So it's um, that's a very good way of doing it. If you can Twixter here, you can just skip straight to the shot then. Now, I do none of my Twixter in Premiere. There's a reason for this, even though you can install Prem um, Twixter for Premiere. This is because when you copy Twix um, Twixter clips into After Effects, they turn out to the Twixter doesn't um, it doesn't apply to the time code at which you're at. It rather applies to the time code at the start of the clip. So it's you'd end up not having your clip twixted here, but you'd have it literally twixted at the start of the clip, the f the first few frames of the um, video layer. So you want to do your, all your Twixter and After Effects. And until then, you're just going to have to settle with this. Okay, so now we have to want to find our next beat. So what I do is I listen for it. 
I stop as soon as I can, then scroll back until I find that, scroll back and forward until I find that beat. So there we go. Now it's going to find our shot. There's our shot. Drag it over. Affect the rate. There we go. Play it through. Okay. Now in this case we have one where the shot comes just a few frames after the beat. So in this case it would be okay, okay to speed it up since it's not going to make that much of a difference. You see that it makes it just 103.5% speed. So that's still okay. So let's find our next shot. Okay. As with the last shot, it should be okay to speed it up since it's not very, um, it's not going to change it by much. So we can see here that that's the end of our clip. So what I'm going to do now is cut my clip off at the next base. Um, this is so that it's a simple transition that you don't have to worry about. So you, it transitions on the beat to the new clip and it looks it looks nice and clean and um, it's very manageable. So we're just going to find that base and then cut. <laughs> Cut the audio, drag in the end of the video. So what I've done, what you can do is actually affect the rate of this clip with the rate stretch tool or control R and set it to maybe, you know, it's 55% if you play editing in 60 frames a second. Once you get under 45, it starts to get framey and that will give you a sort of slow motion. But I want to do all my Twixter and After Effects, so I'm just going to leave it like this, and then when I get into After Effects, I can fix it. If I were to slow-mo it in here, and then do the same in After Effects, it would cause it to be really framey, since, you know, first of all, you're slowing it down to 55%, and then with Twixter, you're slowing that down by f slowing that down to 3%. So you start to get 3% of 55%, which is... I don't know the exact uh, math, but it sounds like it'd be something like 8% speed, and that's really framing, and you, you do not want that. So you just want to leave it at normal speed, 100%, and then do the Twix, and that should look nice and smooth. So there we have it. We have edited our first clip video-wise. Now what I want to do is add my gunshots. So I'm just going to go in here, go to editing, gun sounds. I use... William IS's, or William's um, gun sound, since he actually went in into every single game there is. He has now added Ghost as well. And he recorded every imaginable gun, gun sound for each. If you look here on World at War, there's one gun. I think it's the Springfield, or the... Yeah. There are different ones for each, you know, if it's unscoped, scoped, and all that. So he's gone and literally recorded every possible gun sound there is for all the COD games since COD 4. Anyway, so it's because it's Black Ops 2, I'm just going to use the DSR 50 since it is the DSR 50. And I'm going to choose just the DSR 50 shot. Now this isn't, this doesn't include the bolt in the shot, it's just the shot. You want to find yourself gun sounds that have only the shot, not the bolt or the re-chamber as, as it's also called. It's because it's an ugly extra sound after it. And like this, it blends perfectly with the song, since it's part of the song's beat. It's part of the song's aura, I guess, in that way. So you just want that DSR 50 shot, you drag it in. Then you drag it into your timeline at audio 2. Now, the reason I also scrolled this up so you can see the waveform is because all gun sounds that are recorded tend to only actually come in three or four frames after they 
start. As you see here, nothing, nothing, nothing. Boom, we have our gong snap gun sound. So what you're gonna do is wanna do is find the first you know the first part where you can actually hear the gun sound and it's part of the waveform. If there is a small part of it that's already that you're gonna be that's gonna be chopped off, that's okay, it's um not noticeable. So I'm just gonna cut that. Then drag over the good gun sound back to my shot. And I'm just gonna play the <coughs> now I'm just gonna play this through and listen for whether the audio is of the gun sound is right with the song. So I think that's I I personally think that's slightly too loud, so I'm just gonna set it to about negative seven. What I've done there is use the audio gain to adjust my gain by a certain amount of decibels. So I'm just going to play that through again and listen. So that might be a little too quiet, so I'm just going to chain adjust it by 2 decibels so it goes to negative 5 overall. I'm just going to try another 2 decibels. Okay, so they can hear the gun sound but it doesn't intrude on the song and it doesn't the ambient sound after the gun sound is gone of the bullet flying through the air isn't in any way disturbing so now I've got that I'm just gonna copy my gun sound and using what in CC you can use the up and down arrows to skip between the previous um, cut and your later cut down arrow brings you to the later cut up arrow brings you to the previous so I'm just gonna now I've control C that, control V on my second shot, go into my third shot, control V, go into my fourth shot, control V, go into my fifth shot, control V, go into my sixth shot, control V. Then I'm just going to highlight all the gun sounds here. By the way, um, in this case where you don't want to move that down, you can just highlight all the ones before it, and then select the last one with by holding shift and clicking on it. You drag that down, and now we can play it through, and it's going to have the gun sounds, and it's going to look nice and perfectly synced up. So that looks very good. The only problem I found is that on this second shot, it seems to be a slightly too late by a few frames. Okay, so I think the shot should actually be there. So what I'm going to do is just drag my shot over, just drag the end of it so it's, there's no audio, um, this, um, desync, I guess. Drag the song to match, and then use the right stretch tool to match it with the video layers. So now we should play it through, and it should be looking absolutely perfect for every shot. Okay, so there we go. We have synced our clip in Premiere. It's perfectly synced, frame by frame. It's going to save. And you can also copy this straight into After Effects and do whatever you want and then bring it back into Premiere. So that, um, I'm just going to go quickly through some render settings now for rendering well, and that will then conclude the tutorial. So it's, um, to choose your which parts you render. You go to the start of your video, you click on this button or the mark in, uh, and then you go to the end and then mark out. You can also do this if you have an audio, if you have it all as one video layer, you can just press X and it forms itself to the length of the video layer there. Once you have put in your mark ins, you can always drag these over and they also snap. So now now we have that, we have our whole clip that we want to render. We're just going to go to File, Export, Media, or just Control M. Now we want our format to be H.264. This produces an MP4 file, which is the most versatile file, which can be used by all operating systems, Mac, Linux, and for Windows. And it's also one of the um, default file sizes for YouTube uploading. 
Now we don't, we want to have custom here, since we're going to want to change it. We're going to make our video 59.94 frame rate. Please load. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go to, I'm going to have to scroll down until you find HD 720p 29.97. Change the frame rate to 59.94. This is so you render it in 60 frames per second, and that way, if you have to put the video uh, file back into your pro project and use that to edit, you still have 60 frames per second. So if you slow mo if you slow it down in any way, it's not going to look choppy. This is also for any players that want to render their clips perfectly in 60 frames per second. You can use this as well. Just gonna scroll down. We want square pixels, field order, progressive. Doesn't matter what your TV standard is. Um, level is. I'm just gonna change to 5.1. Actually, no, I don't want to change to 5.1. I want it to be 3.2, since otherwise you're gonna be rendering in a different um, in 1080p, which is gonna make a huge file size. So, because because of that, this has been um, overthrown, where the width is now 720 and the height is 470, 480. So I'm just going to want to change this, but I'm going to have to first unlink them, since what it, right now what it is, if I were to change anything, it would change in the same ratio of 480 to 720. So if I change this to 500, it would change by 720 by the same ratio of that. So I just want my height to be 720, which is 720p, and then change your width to be 1280. There you go, now you have your 720p there. Everything else is okay, I usually have a target bitrate of 9 and 11, which allows you a nice file, and just change it to VBR2 pass. Filters, you don't need anything. Audio, uh, you just want to change it to 256 kilobytes per second. Multiplexer, you don't want to change that. Captions, no, and FTP, no. So there you have your render settings. Now, what you also want to want to render is this. Since if you have pre-rendered anything in Premiere, which is done by changing what where your render um, thing is and pressing Enter, if you have done that, you're going to want to click this, since what you have done is you've rendered previews, and you can use that for your final rendering. Okay, so now that we have click use previews, um, you don't want to have anything on this. You can click on use maximum render quality. I don't find that it does absolutely anything to it. So I'm just going to choose now where to put my, where to output this. So I'm just going to put it. Yeah, why not? Into my documents, you can choose where to put it. You've and you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna yes, call it Tutorial Premiere Pro. Click Save, Export, and then it's going to export your video file. I'm just gonna open up Documents then. We can find that once it's finished rendering, so I'm just going to wait and as you see here it actually gave me a really small file size of just 9 megabytes of course if that's still too much for you, you can change your um, what are they, your um, bitrate settings and just make it slightly lower so we have that rendering of course, if you are going to be rendering many things multiple times, you can set up your settings. It's going to go back there. Set up your settings. Um, I've got it here. Yep, it's all the same. No, you can set up your settings, and then click Save Preset, and that way, whenever you go back, you'll have a preset here. So I've already have one for best render settings. So you can save that preset and then use that all the time. I'm just going to cancel. Go into my 
document, I called it Tutorial Premiere Pro. Now we're just going to play this through and see, you know, how it goes. So there you see, we've, re we've both synced up our clip, we've rendered it perfectly in 720p 59.94, so we haven't lost any quality. And that's Premiere. I, as I said before, I highly suggest um, getting it. Um, there are ways of getting it, and um, yeah, if you need any help, just contact me. I have my Skype on my YouTube. Alright, bye.